When it comes to sustainable architecture, some of the most interesting examples can be found in and around Amsterdam. Here in the narrow streets of the historic old town, you'd struggle to build anything new, but I'm on my way to meet some architects who found a way around that problem. Hello. Martin. Hello. Architect Martijn Poel is using possibly the most sustainable method of all, repurposing buildings that already exist. Let's go. His team is transforming Amsterdam's old bridge houses into hotel suites. They were used for hundreds of years to control the city's canals and waterways. We love working with existing structures, is actually to open up a dialogue, digging up uh, about its past. Modernizing old buildings can be an expensive undertaking, but it is more environmentally friendly. Construction and demolition debris account for the largest waste streams in terms of mass in the EU. And that's before you get to the energy costs of actually building. Because that stored energy cost is it's, it's something you can't see, it's not tangible, but it is valuable, isn't it? Actually, it's a pity that carbon is not measured in making a business case, but I do believe that that's the way to move forward and to have a holistic appreciation of the construction, economic value, historical value, embodied energy and its materials. The company that runs Suites Hotel is renting the bridge houses from the city for 20 years as a financial investment. So far, they have 28. I want to see another one. I think that's it over there. Doesn't look like much, although it is supposed to be one of the coolest rooms in Amsterdam. This one was built in the 1960s. Wow, a lot of glass. The challenge is to create comfort and privacy in a structure that was designed to do something else entirely. Oh, the bridge is going up. Wow. The city is going on around us. Maybe we need to change the way we think about hotel rooms if we're going to be repurposing industrial buildings into places to stay. But can this idea of repurposing be used on a wider scale to tackle, for example, the global housing shortage? The Netherlands alone is facing a deficit of nearly 300,000 homes. These modular units in nearby Alkmaar are designed to be repurposed and never demolished. This lot are about to start their first life as accommodation for young people, but when that's done, they can be rejigged and even relocated. So this is a studio flat for one person. Yeah. How could that be adapted or changed? One, one thing you can do is you can link two and then you would have an apartment for an elderly couple. You can also make an office building out of it. We always compare it to giant Legos. Giant Lego bricks with low carbon footprints. They're made from sustainable wood rather than concrete. It's a little bit cheaper or uh, the same price as a traditional build. The advantage is that it's much faster, much more sustainable and it's much better quality. It's certainly quick. What's so incredible is that three weeks ago, this was just foundations. There was no structure here at all. That's correct. And in three yeah. weeks time, people will be moving in. In a country where space on land comes at a premium, the Netherlands has found another way. This is an entire floating neighborhood just outside Amsterdam. Almost a third of the country is situated below sea level. So projects like this may be essential in creating more housing. We all know that seawater levels and river levels are rising. A lot of people live near the water. Take, for instance, big cities like Manila in the Philippines or Jakarta in Indonesia. They are being flooded. They're sinking. Nearly 100 homes are already here. And by the time it's finished, that number will have doubled. Each unit is pulled into place by boat and supported by buoyant concrete tubs. So we're just 10 minutes from the centre of Amsterdam here. The city centre is that way, where everything is so compact. But here, it feels so spacious, so quiet. You could definitely live here. The projects I've visited suggest there is no one blueprint for success, although they do all seem to be sacrificing low upfront costs for something bigger, flexibility and adaptability for the future. And from what I've seen, 
The Netherlands is definitely taking a lead role when it comes to innovation, driven by the demand for more housing and the need to think imaginatively to create it.